Hello guys and welcome to today's video. I'm joined by some very special guests today which will all go around to introduce themselves in just a second. This is essentially the intro to a series that's going to hopefully be a long lasting series where we take uh, misunderstood and misrepresented moments in Spartan history and try and redirect them and put a more realistic approach towards them. My name is Adam, I'm an ancient Greek green actor and history enthusiast and today I'm joined by Patrick Mohair, Benny and Paul Bardinius. Hi. So I'm Patrick. I'm also a historical reenactor. I also am very into ancient Greece and Sparta in particular. I've done a lot of research, so pleasure to be here, Adam. I'm Benny. Um, I also have a last name, Truska. <laughs> um, I am an ancient historian and I am an ancient Greek archaeologist. Uh, I have my bachelor's of ancient history from the University of Missouri, as well as classics. Uh, from the same university, and I have my master's in Greek and Eastern Mediterranean archaeology from the University of Athens in um, Athens, Greece, and I specialize in ancient Greek warfare. I'm Paul Bardunius. I have written a number of articles, and I wrote a book, Hoplites at War, on hoplites. I'm actually not a historian. I'm a biologist by trade, but I've been experimenting on a variety of reenactors as though they were animals. And uh, we've shown some light on some of the issues in uh, ancient warfare. I will note that this topic is near and dear to me because my great grandfather, Miletios Bardunius, came from Sparta. So as I said earlier, this is going to be a series dedicated to sort of debunking certain uh, myths or misconceptions uh, about Spartan society and culture, uh, from warfare to politics to how modern politics infiltrates and corrupts our view as modern people on the people of the past. So. One of the problems with the modern understanding of Sparta is that there's a lot of political identity tied to what people believe Sparta was. So you have essentially two camps, and this extends into academia, where on the one hand, Sparta is this ultra nationalistic, you know, um, stand in for the modern right of uh, politics. And on the other side, you have people attacking Sparta and they're attacking Sparta really to attack the ultra-right of modern politics. So to understand Sparta, you kind of have to, you know, find some middle path in there. And, I, and some authors have done that well. Some authors have done that not so well. Um, so what I think we want to do with this series is take a look at elements of Sparta, how they've been mischaracterized by either side or just by historians in general, and unravel the kernel of truth that's beneath that. And this is a not a new phenomenon at all. Like people throughout history have done this. One of the reasons we study history is to apply it to today. And they've always done that. You know, a lot of what we know about Athens and Sparta comes from 17th century and 18th century scholars who wanted to compare Athens to Britain and Sparta to like kind of the Franco-Prussian continental army. If you look at any kind of Cold War era historian, they're all Athens is, you know, the proto-democracy and Sparta is the proto-communism. So the fact that people are applying Sparta to the ultra-right today is not really anything new. It's just the latest iteration that we want to try to look through and look back at, get kind of a more, obviously nothing we do is going to be perfectly unbiased. We all have our own biases, but trying to consciously step back and separate ourselves to get a more objective look at it than a lot of what everyone is leaning into today, because it's very tempting and very easy to go down a rabbit hole. Yeah, I think the modern world's very politically at war, and we're going to try and take the modern politics out of the ancient politics. Well, what's funny about, you mentioned the ancient politics, is one of the reason Sparta has this, what was called a mirage by a French um, scholar around it, is that they created it themselves. So they are essentially victims of their own press. Uh, it did them well in the day to be considered, you know, terrifying warriors and, uh, you know, an orderly society. Many of the Athenians looked at the Spartan society, especially the aristocrats, as you know, a, a well-run society that they should emulate. You know, and then the other problem we have with the ancient sources is that a lot of what we consider ancient sources, like Plutarch, for instance, Plutarch got a lot of what he wrote about Sparta from a fellow named Philarchus, and Philarchus got a lot of what he wrote about Sparta from 
a revival of Spartan culture in the uh, third century by a Spartan king who wanted to sort of recreate ancient Sparta. And in doing that, he hired on a philosopher, interestingly enough, from what's now the Ukraine, to uh, sort of recreate the ancient Spartan ways. And a lot of the things that we see in these writings about Sparta may in fact just have been made up in the third century. We don't know. There's a spot in Plutarch where he talks about how he visited Sparta himself and saw some of these things with his own eyes. And he lived in the Roman days about 500 years later. So in addition to, you know, revivals from the Hellenistic era, we're also polluting it with things from the Roman era. Additionally, if we look at a lot of the modern day uh, pop culture, we see there's a lot of uh, misconstrued um, anecdotes of Spartan history. But additionally, a lot of uh, pop culture, such as the movie 300, which I'm, you know, we'll probably talk about most likely, it's a big one, but also say the modern U.S. military or even collegiate athletes, such as like Michigan State University having uh, the Spartans as their mascot. They perpetuate a mis uh, misunderstanding and misinformation about ancient Spartan culture and history that we'll, you know, we will touch upon. But additionally, it um, a lot of people get their knowledge or understanding of it through a misappropriation. And with social media and a lot of the pop history channels, I see them in my news feeds all the time where it'll be, you know, five crazy facts that you never knew about the Spartans and... <laughs> Uh, yeah, they're crazy, and I never knew them because they're completely baseless and have no sources. But yeah, there's a massive influx of, of AI voice and AI image fake uh, historical videos on YouTube, which is very unfortunate because obviously some people will believe that and see that as true. So hopefully this series will be able to uh, at least help some people get a better understanding. And we're not saying that we have all the answers. And do we really ever have all the answers in history? That's another question. But we're taking the sources that we can read and find that are the most accurate and try and essentially piece them together to form what we believe and what many other scholars believe to be the most accurate portrayal of Sparta that we have from the sources available to us. And whether it's debunking myths that were popular with scholars a hundred years ago or myths that are being made up by AIs today, it's something that we feel is important to clear the air on and set the record straight. And real quick, it's a quick anecdote, and I'm sorry to interrupt this. Spartans wearing the color red was not a, on their shield was not a sign of cowardice. I don't know where a certain YouTuber got that idea. I won't name names, <laughs> but that I what? No, that's not a thing. <laughs> that should be filed along with the uh, famous ancient Spartan war dogs and other. Uh... Things that we read of, yeah. That was from one of those AI ones, wasn't it? The yeah. war dogs? Because I saw that the same one. I was like, what the heck is this? <laughs> I mean, Spartans actually had famous dogs, but they weren't war dogs. They, they were, were they hunting rabbits. Dogs, right? They yeah. were hunting yeah. dogs for chasing yeah. rabbits. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So what you can expect in this series of videos is groups or even just two of us talking about uh, certain misconceptions or certain aspects of Sparta that we'd like to redirect the uh, common opinion on. So this may be from things such as were Sparta really military powers? Uh, what was Spartan government really like? What was the education system really like? Or even uh, how ancient sources have bias against them, how modern sources have bias against them. All sorts of areas concerning Sparta and our understanding of them. We will try our best to sort of give a more realistic approach at finding out who really were the Spartans that we so talk about today. I just have long hair. <laughs>